Hello, welcome back. It's character building day today, and that's right, we're going to use Ultra Modern 5. Ultra Modern 5 character building, and what am I going to do? We're going to do the face character class. For those of you who are wondering what that is, don't you worry, I'm going to go over that. Uh, for those of you who have already figured it out, it's basically a, a face character. It's a bard. Uh, it's the one that does all the talking. It's the one that's in the front. Um, put up a poll, feel free to take part in that poll. Um, you will need dice, because I'm going to get you to do some dice rolling, make some decisions, help me build this character. I will not be doing it alone. So uh, I want you to uh, take part. So make sure you have all of your polyhedral dice. Welcome, Fred Huber. Let's get them started. Let's get straight into it. Okay, where are we? This is the screen I want. Ha <laughs> ha! Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about role-playing games. This is character building. That's right, character building for Ultra Modern 5. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Ultra Modern 5, Ultra Modern 5 is a similar rule system to Dungeons & Dragons 5e. The, the only difference is this isn't really designed for your generic fantasy world. This is designed for a modern setting it is designed for a, uh, a science fiction setting or a fantasy science fiction setting. It's designed for everything that Dungeons & Dragons doesn't really do very well. Okay, so that's all here. Yes, that means laser guns, explosives, mech suits and spaceships and vehicles and tanks, stuff like that. That sort of stuff is here, for sure. So I thought it would be good to actually give you a taste of what it's like to build these types of characters, which is why I'm doing these live streams. You will need dice, because there's a lot of dice rolling required to actually make this work. Uh, you will need to make some decisions in the chat. I'm going to have my phone going so that I can see what you're saying as we go through. I will be showing you sections of the book from a PDF, and um, I, will, uh, I will try to explain a lot of the features that you have as you're going through as well. Um, but I really want to focus on getting you to actually take part in the construction process first before I start sort of rattling off what this does and what that does. Okay, so you will absolutely need to have some dice. If you don't have dice, grab some. Otherwise, um, I don't know, make up some numbers. Just make up a number. <laughs> That'll do. Um, I'm only kidding. Um, if you can't roll dice, there's some decision making to be done. So you'll be able to select some different things as we go through. So that's uh, also part and parcel of the process. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is establish what are we dealing with. Okay, what we're dealing with here is we need a name. Okay, so I always like to start off with a character name. I've got a fillable uh, PDF for a character sheet that we're going to use that's part of Ultra Modern 5. So hashtag, what is the uh, character's name? That is our first task. Always need to have a good name, so give me a name. And <clears throat> all rolls are max. I was only kidding. So now let's go with um, roll. I want you to roll four D6 or six-sided dice for ability scores. So I want you to list all four numbers, and I will do the rest in mathematics, okay? So don't you do the mathematics, let me do the mathematics side of things, okay? That way we don't get into, into trouble, okay? So this is what I want you to do. Roll four six-sided dice for your ability score. So we've got to do six of them. So I'll need six separate rolls. And let's get over to the appropriate screen, which is not that screen. should be this screen here. Okay, all right, cool. That's green, move that screen along. But uh, there we go. Here we go. This is our character sheet. So, first things first, we are face class. So I'll put that down. Uh, we'll put in, we have currently, I don't know who the player is. We are level one. We're only going to go to level one today. Uh, we're not going to worry so much about the ladder stuff because right now it's, it's not really terribly important. Uh, we've got a character name I see. Benjamin Brown Nose. Oh my gosh. Somebody can come up with a better name than Benjamin Brown Nose. Otherwise, it looks like Fred Huber has, has scored the uh, the character name for today. Benjamin Brown Nose. Ugh. Okay. Whoops. That's not, not nose. Brown Nose. Brown Nose. There we go. 
All right, so Fred is rolling frantically. Now, just because Fred Huber, who is a patron, is rolling a dice does not mean you can't. Fred is really here to help inspire the rest of you to roll some dice and take part, okay? This is often what Fred winds up doing, and I have to thank him for doing so. Otherwise, these just wouldn't work out very well. Anyway, so our first set of numbers. Uh, I need to write down a few details here. And three, four, five, and we're doing another six. Okay, <clears throat> now, even though I'm going to just chuck these numbers in, that doesn't mean we can't move them around, okay? I'm not suggesting that we can't leave them where they are, but let's let's start off. Fred has rolled uh, three fives, three fives, and a one. So the system we're going to do is roll six side and um, six uh, d six, or roll four. Should I say roll four six sided dice? So roll four six sided dice, and the lowest number on those six sided dice that's the one we're going to drop, okay? And then we add those numbers together. So three fives and a one, drop the one, keep the fives, you get 15 as our first one, which is good. And then he's rolled a, a four, a two, a one, and a one. So we drop one of the ones, and we wind up with a seven. So there's a small score on one of these. And then we get a four, a four, a two, and a two. Okay, four, four, two, and two. Drop one of the twos. Keep the four and two fours, and the two comes to ten. So that's ten. Sweet. We got next one is a five, a five, a three, and a three. Looks like um, Fred Hubert, you're going to need to roll me some more dice because it looks like nobody's rolling dice today. Everybody forgot to bring a dice with them. Um, so we drop one of the threes since we don't need one of those threes, and we keep five, five, and three is thirteen. We've got a thirteen. Um, and then we got a six, a six, a three, and a one, and that comes drop one of the drop the one because it's the lowest number. And six, six, and three, twelve, fifteen. We've got another fifteen, which is good. <clears throat> and hopefully we have a the last set of set of numbers. We only have five sets of numbers so far. I'm going to put these numbers in here. As I said before, we can shift these around. That's not a problem. We can take these numbers and put them somewhere else if we need to. Okay, they do not need to be living here. We're not rolling down the line. For those of you who are like, oh, I'm not rolling down the line. No, that's a different game system. Okay, here we go. And we don't know what this one is. We don't know what our charisma is going to be rolled up as. Hello, Overboard. Overboard is also a, uh, um, as a moderator, sorry. How are you doing, buddy? How's it going, Joe? Can't wait to get my hardcover um, copy. I've only peruse the pdf sorry fred i'm at work no dice no problem joe i'm sure fred huber will be able to roll up the last set of dice rolls we need to get us moving i'm i'm sure he will be able to do that and i'm sure he will but we're we're not going to concern ourselves too much with that aspect i'm going to go over the class stuff so don't think that i'm not going to do that i will do that but we actually have something else we need to do. Our proficiency bonus is just like D&D, so it's just going to be a plus two. We can put that number in now. Uh, if I go down here and put in our features, we have a number of different features that we get at level one. And I'm going to just write them in and then I'm explain them a little bit later because I want to get you on to selecting your, your birth, your race, your species. Ditching the hat, the hat isn't going to work for me. I'm going to wind up melting. So we have a couple of different features as part of um, our, our face class. And that is the bulletproof. It's not what you think. When I say bulletproof, ego. Bulletproof. Ego. And we will fill in the details for that shortly. And we also have um, double your efforts. Efforts, double your efforts. Cool, and then we also have another feature, uh, and the DC for this I probably should put in here and make sure it's actually there. DC 15. When we're using double our efforts, we'll come back to it. I'll explain it later. We have life insurance. As a face class, we actually have a thing called life insurance. No, uh, it didn't, didn't come through. It looks like uh, YouTube lost it in the ether. Maybe it decided you were spamming. What would I do without you, Fred? Thank you for putting it in again, though. 
I appreciate it. So we've got a six, five, four, and a five. So I will mark that down in a second. Yes, Fred is coming coming through with all the dice rolls. So let's put in the insurance. Now I was very much aware that it took a really long time to build a character for Ultra Modern 5. I'm going to do my very best to go a heck of a lot faster so that we get it done a little bit quicker. Uh, I'm not sure how easy that's going to be, but I'm going to do my very best. Okay, so we have a 5, a 6, a 5, 6, 5, 4 and a 5. So we drop the 4, that's the lowest number, we keep the other numbers, we wind up with a 16. Okay. So we'll put the 16 in here. Frankly, right now, it doesn't matter where these numbers sit. Okay, I think it's going to be far more important for us to concern ourselves uh, with what we pick in terms of our, our birth. Okay, a lot of the major key decisions. Now, birth, you'll find is on page 18. So if I go to this, this is the book I'm talking about here. So if we go here, this is where all of our birth stuff is. And it is on page 18. So uh, I believe that it's if I punch in this, I get to 18. Yeah, births. So we can. We'll, this is where you can play humans, but you can also play a lot of aliens. If you are betting something bad, <laughs> you lose. It. No, don't don't worry. Um, insurance is um, there's a there's a lot going on with insurance. It's a quite a good feature. Anyway, and I also need to make sure that we put down our, um, our t we've got some talents as well. Okay, so first off, we have the <clears throat> the Kony, Kono, Kono, Kono is basically a, a, a sort of like a mushroom-headed, multi-armed alien. So we could be the uh, the big cap, the Kono. So you can select Kono. I'm not going to go over all the different um, um, abilities. I'm just going to let you see the picture, and then we're going to just get you to pick one. Okay, I think that's the best way. Uh, we have the the insect creature, which is basically, uh, I guess, a, a nightmarish insect-like tyrannical thing with multiple limbs. Uh, there's all sorts of weird things going on here. And it's called the Kahitan. Okay, that's the Kahitan. And it's got a whole lot of features. We have the, the Altered. And the Altered is interesting in that it's a mutation. So you can have all sorts of different mutations. Depending on what your mutation is, we get a whole bunch of different things. Okay, alterations or mutations to your hands you could be aquatic you could have different um, arms big nose carpus choppers um, deformities um, digi digigrade enhance fine hairs fragile iron nails keen keen eyes rhino rhino hide um, simple deficient um, deficiency large uh, legs uh, some sort of metabolism disease uh, metabolic mute and quills all sorts of things and you've got slow speed tails wicked tongue wings all sorts of things okay next we have what i can only describe as like the beast creatures okay it looks like a goat this is just a one version you can have many different versions so it's called the animalist and the animalist you can have a um a, a, a a badger you can be a badger if you really wanted to be a badger you can ha you can have a badger you can have an elephant like hu um, humanoid bat like bear frog goat the goat is the image that you see here okay you can go uh, boar crocodile hawk you can go shark horse tiger possum turtle wolf rabbit and rat or you could be an automation if you want to be a robot you can be an automation Automations get all sorts of different things, okay? They can look like all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, next, we have humans. Humans are exactly what they sound like. You can have human, okay? <laughs> if you want human, you can have human. Uh, there is a, a variation to on the, um, the automation. One is the android and the other one is the robot. So you can select. There are slight differences between those with the automation. Okay, we have the human and there's a whole bunch of stuff around that. I'm not going to go through too much of that. The morpher, so you can actually change your form. So transformation is a big factor. Um, clave transformations, sh uh, forming a shield, forming weapons, um, um, shaper, and you basically you are some sort of horrible mutated, wacky looking thing that can just change their their form to all sorts of awful things, but also maybe cool things. Splice. Splice is when your DNA has been sort of 
animal DNA has been spliced into um, a human to a large degree, okay? Spliced means it's less like the animalist, and it's, uh, but you can still have a lot of things around this. So something like the bear, the beetle, the bee, the cat, chameleon, viper, uh, wolf, dolphin, eagle, horse, wolverine, rabbit, rat, spider. They seem similar, but there are slight differences. And then, then we have the, <clears throat> the tuna. Okay, if you want to be a tuna, you can be a tuna. <laughs> I don't mean like a tuna or as in a fish. Yukari, so Yukara, Yukara, I believe it is, Yukara, you can select Yukara, and those are your choices. There are a lot of choices ahead of you, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch this in, hashtag, pick a birth race or species. That's basically what we're dealing with here. And we'll see what you come up with. They're all basically dogs. Yes, if you want to play a dog, you have no problems. <laughs> um, how about both options? No, no, let's just stay with one. Just select one birth. Make it easy for me. So we've got Pale Rider said dog. Hello, Pale Rider. How are you doing? And we've got Chameleon, the Splice Chameleon. So we could go Splice Chameleon. If nobody else has any other um, suggestions, we're going to go with Splice Chameleon today. <clears throat> I'm all happy for doing Spliced Chameleon. So, uh, yes. Uh, don't worry if I've already chucked it in and you think, oh, but I wanted it to be this. That's all right because I, 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 I can change it. I can change it. So, Splice. You want to be ch Chameleon as in a tuna. Splice tuna. Well, we're not going to, you want to be fish. <clears throat> I don't know that there is a spliced fish. I think that, that hasn't been an option in the past. We've also got bat. So we're going with chameleon. So we're going to be getting some benefits <clears throat> with our chameleon uh, features, which we will deal with in a second. But first off, let me just write in chameleon into our character sheet so that we actually know what it is. Splice. Probably won't put it brackets, it probably won't have enough space. Um, cam. Will it fit? Oh no, it's shrinking it. It is, it's, it is, it is, it is shrinking down. Okay, that's good news. Chameleon. <clears throat> yes, you can now um, change your appearance to a certain degree. Okay, so now that we've done that bit and we've selected Splice Chameleon. I'm going to come back to Splice Chameleon in a second, but I want to I want to keep pushing forward and uh, and, and actually selecting the things um, that make up the character. So we're going to keep moving very very fast. And our next task is life. <clears throat> so life life is like your background. So when you select life. You're dealing with background. So if we go to, to I think it's 30, yeah, here we go, life. There are life paths that you can take. And these are identical to Dungeons and Dragons 5e's background. They're just different. They're just different options. You can, of course, make your own just like they suggest in the player's handbook for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. But because Ultra Modern 5 is 5e compatible and works with that system, <clears throat> there's a whole lot of different life paths you can take related to using a modern setting or sci-fi setting. So let me go through them. Affluent, Bruiser, I'm not going to tell you all the details around them, I'm just going to call out and you get the basic gist. Each of the titles or the backgrounds gives you an idea of what you're dealing with, okay? Affluent, Bruiser, Delinquent, Disciple, Drifter, Intellectual, Labourer, maybe you started off a labourer, Progeny, uh, recluse, uh, we have regular Joe, smooth talker might be a nice one to take if you wanted to, and uh, then there, there is an option to do origins, I want to deal with origins like a little bit after this. So those are your background or life paths. <coughs> Hashtag, pick a life path. 
life path or background. Okay, <clears throat> so while you're deciding on your life path or background that would be suitable for you, what makes sense in terms of what you would like this character to be able to do, okay, I am going to do a little bit of homework. And part of our homework is, as I said, I wasn't too concerned about where the position of the ability scores were because I knew that we could shift them around. <clears throat> Delinquent, delinquent or smooth talker? Pale rider. Smooth talker it is. Looks like we just got a smooth talker. That's fine. I'm all, I'm all for that. What I want to do is I want to just at least give you an idea of what the face character is all about. Because there's some things we need to do with the face character. But let's grab smooth talker. So let's go down here. Uh, smooth talker. And put that into our background. Smooth talker. Okay. Cool. Smooth Joe. We're a smooth Joe. <laughs> We're a smooth Joe. Uh, probably not. Probably not a smooth Joe. But any, any, anyway. So let's have a look at what our smooth talker does. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Actually, I should probably get you to depict the origin now. So there are origins. So there's a lot of different origins that you can select. This is around your birth, your parents, general family. So... You roll a 20-sided dice for this. I'm going to just call them out. You tell me which one you want to roll on and just roll the dice, okay? All right, so we have um, parenting, status. Uh, we have casualty. We have separation, surrogate. We have sibling rivalry, sibling, sibling viewpoint, um, life episodes, tragedy. Tragedy. Uh, we have windfall. We have the table... Um, enemy, we have friendship, we have the cause, who does what, what can be thrown, um, who ticked off who, romance, relationship, um, previous relationship, feelings, issues, uh, misfortune. Okay, so there's a bunch of them. So select one of these things. Carmen Graves, how are you doing? Okay. So hashtag, pick an origin, origin, and roll a d20, because all of these tables are d20 tables. You like windfall? All right, pale rider, we need somebody to roll a 20-sided dice for windfall, okay? Uh, let me find windfall again, I'll just scroll up. Windfall, windfall, windfall. Da da. Ah, here we go. Windfall. There are the. There's the table for windfall. We just need a dice roll, and then I can chuck that in. <coughs> just got home from work, so uh, okay. All right. So twenty sided dice roll, people. Someone's got to have a twenty sided dice roll. Come on, you can do it. It's a dice. You know how to do those. You know how to roll that thing. Okay, we've got a 16. Pale Rider, 16. Oh, it looks like it's definitely 16 today. So let's have a look what 16 says. If I scroll, if I zoom on in a little bit, so you can actually see what say it says. 16 and 17. Here it is. The president of a corporation in medieval times, a duke or baron. So we're going to get rid of the medieval times thing. We're just going to the president of a corporation. You are the president of a corporation, or your origin was the president of an a corporation. So that is our origin. Okay, windfall. So we go into our character sheet, and uh, where is it? Um, origins, origins, origins. Why can't I see origins? Is it, oh, here we go. Origin. Windfall. And I will drop in our little bit of information. You are the president of a corporation. That's our windfall. Windfall origin. Cool. Sweet. That was easy. Next. Uh, we need to deal with... We will need to actually deal with, at this point, where we position our ability scores. So what I wanted to do was at least read to you how the face class works so you can get a better idea of how it's going to be structured for you. Does that make sense? Um... 
And probably the easiest way to do this is to actually take you to that page and read it straight straight from that page. So I, I probably will do that. Um, so we're going here, and 60, uh, is it 50, 50, 60, 60. Okay, face, here we go. So here is the face, this is the, the information we're talking about. So first off, you are all talk. Thankfully, your, your strengths depend on that. Uh, some call you empathetic, while others claim you just possess great or good instincts. Okay, you may have cut your teeth as a psychologist or a confidence artist, con man, con woman. Um, you can spot a lie by their puckering lips and lazy eyes. You can sense the heat of, attrac um, of attraction and the searing loathing of those obsessed with violence. Your war words have been known to disarm, soothe, or enrage. When shooting is not a solution, you're the, on you, you, you're the only, only what? Only? The only one that can save the situation. There's a word missing from there. You're the smooth talker, the negotiator, and the haggler. When a gun is pointed at your head, and when dangling off a cliff, your response is, can't we discuss this? <laughs> okay, so playing the face. You're at your best when bullets are not flying. Though you're not, though you are not as skilled in, in war, warfare, uh, this doesn't mean that you can't sit back and do stuff in combat. There are things that allow you to do stuff in combat as a face. Certain abilities allow you to literally uh, psych out an enemy by um, intimidating commands over the radio, causing diversions, imposing your, your presence to cause hesitation. You have even been known to negotiate the release of prisoner, prisoners and convince an enemy to run instead of fight. However, these abilities aren't limited in their effectiveness. So one of the first things is you'll see that we have to roll for hit points and we will do that. What you will notice is there is no there is no suggestion or telling you what your ability scores have to be. The class doesn't work that way. That is up to you, okay? We have our numbers. I'm going to put down the numbers and I'm going to ask you to tell me where you want to put those numbers, okay? So this is our first thing. Hashtag, hashtag. Uh, where do the, where do the ability scores go that is my go that's my question and um, I'm going to give you the, the ability score numbers so you know what they are ability scores and it's just bang these in so we have a 16 we have two 15s Uh, we have a 13, 13, we have a 10, and we have a 7. A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yep, so, so, I want you to make a decision about where you would like those ability scores to go. So you're going to tell me while I start filling in some details on this character, okay, because that's probably what we need to do is get that moving. Um, so going back to our, going back to our, our class, our uh, class has got a couple of things. They can wear light armor, so light armor proficiency. Doesn't look right. What, what have I done here? Proficiency. Oh, I hate it when my eyes have to shift back and forth. Proficiency. Proficiency. That are not quite proficient. There we go. That's better. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Someone else can place them. Does strength, influence, intimidate in this game? No. Most of your most of your skills. So, for example, your skills in this game are affected in, in essentially the same way that Dungeons and Dragons Five E works. So that means things like um, persuasion is charisma, performance is charisma. Okay, intimidation is going to be charisma, deception is charisma, 
So if you're wanting to go the, the way of the face, then you probably want the 16 to be in charisma. But it doesn't mean you need to have a 15 in wisdom or a 13 in intelligence or constitution is 10 and strength is, uh, is 15. You can shift things around. If you want to shoot from a distance, you probably want to have a higher dexterity than 7, right? So, yeah, you can move things around. So pump in some numbers and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So let me just pump in a few more bits of information. So there are a couple of things in terms of weaponry that you also have. All simple weapons. So we get that. And we also get one-handed small small arms. Whoops. One handed small arms. So we can have a pistol. That'll be pretty much what we're dealing with there. Okay, also, tool proficiency. We have disguise kit as a proficiency. Of course, disguise kit. Uh, we also, what else do we have here? Uh, we have all ground vehicles and aircraft. All, all ground vehicles and aircraft whoopsie aircraft aircraft so you can fly aircraft or you can use ground vehicles <clears throat> okay so these are your proficiencies next on our list of things that we have we get equipment now we get a bunch of different options with equipment, but uh, we'll deal with that in a second. Intelligence. Now, saving throws. We get some saving throws that are going to be proficient. We get intelligence as a saving throw proficiency. We get wisdom as a saving throw proficiency. And we also get charisma. So we get three. Rather than just two, we get three. Skills. So this is how th this particular character works. This character is a little, a little different. Instead of it being really open, there are sort of like a few restrictions. So here we go. Skills. Perception and insight and four skills from the following. You either get computer use, engineering, history, intimidation, investigation, performance, persuasion, science, and stealth. So first off, we definitely are going to get perception. We're definitely getting in insight. And we'll get four more, which we'll deal with shortly. Okay, so have you changed? You've changed things up. Charisma 16. Okay. Well, we can't have Charisma 4, so it must be 16 that you're talking about. Okay. Dex 15. You both agree with that. That's fine. Strength. You want strength to be 15, Pale Rider, and strength. You want the strength to be the um, this lowest. Come and graves. Okay, I see. I see. All right. So let's let's shift this round a little bit. Let's change our numbers because they will they will adjust they will adjust and shift. That's fine. Int ten. Int ten. Int ten. Okay. All right. That's fine. We've 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 we accommodated this. So this is going to be um, that stays where it is. We've got a couple of fifteens. Dex, you want, well, well, that's fine. Let's go with Dex 15. And we'll make Strength the low one. That's fine. So that's just going to be 15. And that'll be 7. Here's where the 7 goes. And then the other thing I need to change around is, I believe, uh, Wisdom is going to Con. Is that right? Wisdom 13. Okay, so Wisdom is 13, Intelligence is 10, and Con is 15. 16, 2 15s, 13, 10, 7. Okay, all right, that'll do. All right, that'll do. That's cool. We're, we're, all, we're all set with that. That's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. No, no problems whatsoever. Okay, 
So I'm going to get you to pick your skills shortly, but what I want to do is I, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to actually cover too much of that just yet. We're going to come back to that just to make life a little bit easier for you. For you. So equipment. Uh, you start with a bunch of equipment. Okay. Your equipment section is here. You start with the following equipment in addition to the equipment granted by your background, which is your life path or your life. You get a one-handed small arm costing three hundred um, dollars or less. You get a set of light armor worth three hundred dollars or less. You get a ground ve vehicle worth thirty thousand dollars or less. You get a disguise kit, and you get two hundred dollars in additional gear. So there's a lot of gear purchasing that's going to take place very very shortly, which we will definitely do. But the first thing we can definitely put down because we know we're going to get it, and it doesn't require a choice. I like the equipment section for the face, by the way. Disguise kit. Right at the top. Right at the top. So there we go. We've got that. Okay. So let's go and deal with some of the things that we had selected before. We made a bunch of choices. We put them in place. And now we actually need to actually go through all the different features and then put them into the, into the character sheet. We'll come back to the skills, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about our class face class skills, so you know, there's four to choose from. But there's some things that we had as part of our birth. So, let's go here. Oh, it should be 19, there we go. That, that gets us there. Alright, our birth. Now, the birth that you selected was um, a, a spliced chameleon. So the, the spliced chameleon, let's, let's, I might just make that a little bit smaller. Spliced chameleon, where are you? Swinging through here, spliced chameleon, that's automation, there's robots, humans, uh, and the spliced one, where are you spliced? Here we go, spliced, okay, so there's a couple of things we get. <sighs> Starting out, one of your ability scores increases by one, so you have to decide which one it's going to increase by. Okay. Hashtag. What ability score do you increase by one? Okay. Decide which one it's going to be. If you've forgotten what our current ability scores look like, strength is seven, dexterity is 15, constitution is 15. Intelligence is 10, Wisdom is 13, and the Charisma is 16. Okay, so those are our current numbers. So decide where you want that to be. Age, okay, so a spliced, a spliced lives the same time as an average human. Okay, so it's exactly the same. So age is not going to be a problem. We're still going to be medium size. Okay, we're essentially based off the human, and our walking speed is 30 feet. So we'll put in 30 feet for our walking speed. That was easy. Next. Languages. You speak common as your language. So we'll put in languages. Languages. And they is common. Whatever that that language is in your in your world. Common English, I don't know. Who knows? You tell me. Uh, next, you sub race. There are numerous sub races depending on the special um, a specific animal being spliced in. So this is where we go to the chameleon, okay? Either dexterity or con is our weapon dex. Is our weapon dex? Well, if you want to shoot something, it would be dexterity. You, if you want to shoot something with a, a pistol, it's going to be dexterity. If you want to hit something up close, it's strength. If you, yeah. Um, I be, I be view, view, quiet. It's hunting, you're hunting crickets. All right, chameleon. No, no, pale rider, I totally get it. So so make a decision about whether you want your dexterity to go up or your con and uh, yeah. And somebody has said strength. I mean, if you want to move your strength up, you can. Um, right. Okay, so let's go to the chameleon. So with your chameleon, 
this is how the chameleon works. Your ability score increase. You get a wisdom score increase of two. So we go to our wisdom, because that is just about pushed up. Wisdom is no longer a 13, it is now a 15. Okay? Which will actually be probably very useful, because perception and insight is going to be vital for a face character anyway. So chameleon. You have a climb speed of 10 feet. Okay, so we go here. Climb speed 10 feet. Ten feet. I'm not sure that that climb speed of ten feet is hugely useful, considering that if you can move thirty feet, you can usually move fifteen feet. Um, so I'm not I'm not quite sure I understand what what's going on there. Um, colorization as an action, you gain advantage to your next stealth check, but this benefit is nullified when you move. So colorization will take this feature. Oh, you gain 10 feet of movement. Climbs, no, you gain climb 10 feet. No, yeah. Is that, is that increasing your climb by 10 feet? No, it's just a 10 feet climb, isn't it? Okay, all right, let's put this into our character sheet. This is under um, our race, or should I say our birth stuff. Colorization and shortness to action. Um, you gain advantage on your next stealth check, but this benefit is nullified when you move. Okay, cool. We've got that information. Done. <laughs> okay, Dex it is. So your, the increase you asked for is Dex. Uh, you want to min-max? Uh, geez, it's pretty maxed out as it is. This class hasn't got that many things going on <laughs> that aren't maxed out. Okay, so that is our... Our birth has been sorted out. We've done everything we need to do with our birth. We've got our origin. We still need to deal with our background. So our background, if we go to our background, which is page 36, and I go here. This is the life path that I was talking about. We have already picked a life path. We decided that smooth talker was the one we wanted. So let's find smooth talker. So I'll read this out to you. As a mirror to your recluse, you find interacting with people thrilling. They invigorate you, and you find confidence and motivation when surrounded by those paying attention. Okay. You are often the leader in a situation, um, or you desire to be the said leader. In school, you quickly found that words and actions would gather the interest of others, encouraging you to continue the practice. You can't stand remaining still in front of a computer or in isolation. You have these. These are the things that you get. So we're going to get persuasion or intimidation. You have to make a choice. Okay. So select whether you want persuasion or intimidation. Select. Persuasion. Or intimidation okay you have to decide which one you want you get one gaming set okay as a tool proficiency so one gaming set you'll you can decide on what that is I'm not really too concerned set one I don't know what that will be <laughs> you'll let me know um, and then you get one language of your choice. So you get an extra language. So it's common plus plus one more. Okay, depending on your world. Persuasion it is. Okay, so we are selecting persuasion. So we've got that. That helped. We already have three skills, and we're going to get to select four more, by the way. Okay, so that's languages. Equipment. One gaming set. A set of fine clothes and fifty dollars in your wallet. So, let's take those ideas and chuck them into our, our basket for our equipment, and drop that in. One gaming set and fine clothes. Whatever they might look like, it's really up to you. Okay, fine clothes. 
if you've decided what game type of gaming set you want you let me know if you can think of something I'll just put it down okay um, if you want to wait until I get to the equipment section that's fine too my gaming set and we get fifty dollars we'll just put it in the gold section fifty okay fifty bucks all right cool next uh, where was I uh, that is it that's all our that's all our information you'll notice that there are no personality traits ideal spawns and flaws uh, the reason being is that Chris Deus believes that you should be able to make that up yourself you don't need him that's how you that's that's the decision around how you play your character um, that it didn't need to be hard baked into background so he didn't include that in ultra modern 5 uh, you'll notice there's no special feature either there's no special narrative feature in um, ultra modern 5 this is it, it's just these that's it okay uh, there's a little bit of fluff which is your origin that you you pick up which we've already done okay so that's all sorted loaded dice persuasion botched clone something spliced into the era <laughs> Loaded dice would be funny. Okay, so we've done that. So now you, you're going to have to actually select some skills. Hashtag select for skills for the face class. Okay. Now you are wondering what are those. I suppose I would imagine you're probably like, ah, okay but I don't remember what what were the face class skills that we get access to there must be some yes there is okay <laughs> so face class the skills that you get access to the four that you get to select from you automatically get perception and insight so don't worry about that but you have you can choose either computer use so using computers use computer computer use engineering history Intimidation, we don't have intimidation. Uh, investigation might be useful. Performance, persuasion, we already have. Science or stealth. Now, I would suggest maybe stealth's a good idea if you're the face person. Maybe investigation, using computers might be great. Look, there's, there's nothing really wrong with any of these. Any of these would be fine. Okay, so decide what you want and pick something. Stealth performance, right? Well, that's a good start. We've got that two down. All right, stealth performance history. I need one more people, one more, one more out of those those that that selection. I said okay. Computer use, engineering, history, intimidation, investigation, performance, persuasion, science, sciences, stealth and investigation Carmen Graves you'll tell me if you feel differently about that but I'll put those down okay you let me know if that's not going to work for you okay so we, we've got all our skills we've got a lot of proficient skills you might notice that we have seven proficient skills as a face person that's quite a few yep okay so we need to, we'd still need to do our hit points so I'm going to get you to roll an eight sided dice for this hashtag roll a d8 oh no sorry don't forget about rolling because it's it's average we'll just take the average at first level so normally it's a, an eight sided dice face um face character hit points at level one will just be eight plus your constitution modifier which is easy enough to do after that then we start rolling dice average is five or you roll an eight sided dice and then you add your constitution modifier that's going level two and up and forward or upward okay so eight plus your con modifier uh, our con modifier is going to be a 2, so 2 and 8 is 10. I should have let you guys roll for the um, the hit points, but uh, I'm, I'll, I won't do that. I won't do that. I'll just put it in. Okay. All right, now let me change these numbers around a little bit because this is going to be confusing. So I'll put the 16 in here. Make that the small number. That's 7. 15, 10, 15, because it's the modifier we normally use, correct? 16. Okay, so a 16 is actually a plus 3. A 15 is actually a plus 2. 10 is actually 
0 modifier. Constitution is plus 2. Um, our dexterity is gone to a plus 3. Sorry, plus 3, not plus 1. And uh, a 7 is a minor. What is a 7? I forgot what a 7 is. 7, 7, 7, 7. Uh, God, there's so many so many game systems that I've played. I can't remember what the 5v7 represents. I think it's a minus 2. I think it's a minus 2. I think it's a minus 2. I hope it's a minus 2. I really do. Uh, it is a minus two. It is a minus two. Uh, uh, this is the problem when you start building characters for so many different systems. It is a minus two. Okay, seven is minus two. Okay, cool. We're not going to worry about that because we're going to stick all of our shit into a vehicle because we're going to get a vehicle, remember. We're going to buy a vehicle with a whole bunch of money. Uh, alignment. I'm not going to worry about alignment. Uh, if you want to worry about alignment, you're willing. I'm welcome to. Um, since Carmen is here, that's fine. You're happy with the skills. Good, Carmen. Uh, Carmen, because you have been willing to participate so much, I'm putting Carmen Graves in here. Here we go. <clears throat> right. That's that done. Next. We've done the backgrounds. We've done our birth. We need to start plonking in the rest of our um, class stuff. And I need to start explaining to you about some of these things as well. So before we do that, what we I really want to do is I want to nail down you purchasing some stuff, okay? So this is how I'm going to do it. To make it really, really simple for you, I'm going to drop in some money for extra gear, so 250. This is extra bits and pieces. And then we are going to get you to purchase uh, some a small arms and some light armor. If you want to have a light armor, you don't have to have it. You're on it. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay. So I'm doing pretty well in terms of time, I feel. So hashtag um, buy, so buy a, buy, buy, buy light armor. Um, so it's going to be light armor at $300 or less. I'm going to show you some options in a second. The other thing that I want you to decide on is buy um, one-handed small arms, which is basically a pistol at, whoops, 300 or less. Okay, next. Uh, and then you're going to purchase a ground vehicle by ground vehicle at 3000 dollars or less. Like, there we go. Right, let me show you some equipment. Shall I do that now? I think I should. Uh, so we're going to go over here. Um, I'll punch in all the numbers uh, for your character and, and figure out all the maths for it a little bit shortly, but not just just not just right now. I'll do, I'll do that after. We'll just get the equipment sorted out. And then I will explain some of these features that you get, and there's still a, another choice you have to make. But 117 is equipment, gear. This is it. This is the equipment and gear section. Uh, and there's tech levels and all that sort of stuff, but don't worry about that. That's really unimportant. He spelled it out. He's made it very clear that it was small arms, one-handed. This is the small arms, one-handed section. So you could buy an air dart pistol at 150, which would be fine, okay? You could buy a break action uh, shot pistol at 300. That would be fine. Uh, you can have a... Uh, capsicum spray at 55 dollars 
you can afford to buy a, um, a grappling hook at $50 if you want. You could have a high caliber auto loader at $250. You can have a low caliber auto loader at $250. You can have a machine pistol, that's right, a machine pistol at $300. Uh, you can have a one-handed grenade launcher at $300. <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, you can have a pocket pistol at $200. You can have a revolver. It's a normal sort of three-wheel revolver. Uh, that is at $150. And those are your choices for one-handed small arms pistols. I'm going to have a drink of water. I'm going to let you think about that. I'm going to show you the armor that you can select in a second. And then lastly, you're going to pick a vehicle. Your machine pistol looks like it might be winning the, winning the day. A five-finger discount the weapon. Uh, get the limousine, the limo. Uh, pistol fist and then rob them. Uh, okay, all right, okay. All right. Let's, let's put down the machine pistol. I think it's pretty clear you want the machine pistol. So what does a machine pistol actually do? Our machine pistol does 1d4 piercing damage. It has a range of 50 feet. And maximum range of 200 feet okay and um, it is auto so you can go into auto which is a, a d6 and has a reload so it gets 20 shots so there's a lot of information there no one wants the grenade launcher tell me Carmen do you want me to mark down the grenade launcher if you want me to put down the one-handed grenade launcher you can have the one-handed grenade launcher I don't I don't mind hey <laughs> um, the machine pistol seems to be winning out at present so I, I'm all for putting down the machine pistol but if you don't want the machine pistol just say so just because I'm writing it down doesn't mean it don't get, don't get changed <laughs> can we get a revolver as a backup no um, oh you mean oh you want to spend some money as a revolver look <laughs> you could have a revolver as a backup how's that sound are you happy with that can buy the backup revolver. Revolver. You got your revolver. That's 150, I believe, for the revolver. So you get uh, yeah, 150 for the revolver. So let's let's take away some money. You now got 100 dollars to spend with on miscellaneous. Not at all, Carmen. That's cool. Why, why don't we, we can go, we can go grenade launcher, we can go machine pistol. It's, um, look, I, I don't mind. So Carmen, if you want to change it out, you can. I'm going to put in here for now, machine pistol. I won't do the maths for it. Not just yet. Machine pistol. Unless I need to put grenade launcher. And then I will put here revolver. Revolver. Okay, so we're definitely going to get a revolver. And for the revolver, let's do some of the mass. 1D, uh, 1D4, and we've got our range. And it's breached six shots. Okay, so. Uh, what did I say? 1D4? Revolver, 1D4. Yes, it is. 1D4. So 1D4 piercing. And the attack for that, for your revolver, would be your dexterity modifier plus your uh, your proficiency bonus because you're proficient with this weapon so you get a plus five for your revolver hey <laughs> gonna fire at point blank anyway <laughs> so you can't possibly miss um right okay that's that's that bit so we've got that information in temporary hit points not applicable right now so let's get rid of this one um so we need to do our hit dice. Our hit dice is a 1d8. Uh, now we get we get one of these, total of one. And the hit dice is 1d8 plus two when we use it. Okay, cool. Life events, don't worry about that just yet. Our initiative is going to be plus three. We have a, a vote for change to grenades. All right, grenade grenade launcher it is. Um, you um, sick puppies, you. Um, One-handed grenade launcher. So, grenade launcher it is. Okay. 
grenade launcher, one hand, okay? And damage, well, we'll work that out in a second, but to, to hit, we are proficient, so it's a plus five, and that's special, okay? It's a grenade launcher. It's going to work a little bit different to what you're used to. So there's your grenade launcher sorted out. Crazy stuff. Who would have guessed? Uh, <laughs> unmounted, so it doesn't have to be mounted. Grenade, and it's got a loading feature. Okay, and we've got a range. Um, I'm not going to bother putting in the range for this weapon because it just, we just don't have time. Let's get it into armor because you're going to pick some armor. Don't worry about this. Two, you get two-handed weapons as well, but you can't, you're not proficient, so you don't get to use them as a face. Forget about you got your grenade launcher. There are also heavy weapons if you're proficient with heavy, heavy weapons. Let's keep moving. We've got super heavy weapons, but you're not super heavy weapon proficient, so sorry, you can't have them today. Uh, maybe another day. Keep going, and we're now going to hopefully get into the armor. Where's my armor section? This, this is a huge section, equipment. He goes over everything a lot, and, and he got an expert in um, firearms and detonators and, and just all this sort of stuff to, to help him build all this too, which is crazy. Melee weapons, we're not going to worry about it. We can have simple weapons, so you can have things like this. You know, you could have uh, brass knuckles, if you want to have brass knuckles. A collapsible baton for $25 um, um, dollars is fine. You could have that. A fighting knife with a bayonet, you can have that for $25. You're going to have a plug bayonet for um, $10. All the rest are too expensive right now. You could have a spiked bayonet if you really want to. Oh, let's, no, that's, that's Marshall. Forget about that. But you can have brass knuckles. You can have collapsible baton. You can have a fighting um, knife uh, bayonet or a plug bayonet. Any of those would be perfectly fine. You want nuclear grenades. Well, I think that's getting a bit too far. Uh, revolvers that never jam. <laughs> Hashtag. Do you want a simple weapon? Hashtag. Do you want a simple weapon? There we go. You decide. You tell me. I'm going to go down here uh, and keep going. Um, but you can't afford it. So these demolition stuff, we're, we're going to just skip past demolitions. Last time we had demolitions, <laughs> exploding things. Uh, and we're getting into armor. Here we go. Now there's a whole lot of types of armor here. Light armor. These are the armors that you can use. But there is a huge section on armor, if you're wondering. So armor that you can actually afford and purchase and you are proficient and can actually wear. You can have leather or textile armor at $20. You can have ballistic armor at $40. Or you can have synthetic weave at $40. I would say ballistic armor is probably going to give you a 12 plus your dex modifier. Which it's a bit heavier, okay? But there are no other sort of major drawbacks other than it's 15 pounds rather than 8 pounds or 7 pounds. You want a knife. Oh, fine. You want you want to, you want to select something that it's not even there. You want a knife? Okay, Graves. You can have a knife. I'm just going to write knife there. I'm not even going to charge you for the knife. How's that sound? I'm so nice. Um, so I need to put this in here. Uh, this is a grenade launcher, one-handed, and. You want a knife? Fine, you can have a knife. You can have the, you can have the knife for free. Um, always take the free weapon. I'm going to I'm going to steal an ice pick from a hotel. Synthetic? Yay, okay, you want synthetic. Is that what you want? Synthetic armor. Synthetic armor is not going to give you a huge amount of protection. It's only 11 plus your dexterity modifier. Same as leather textile armor, okay? Synthetic's just a bit more expensive. So it's a synthetic weave armor. Syn synthetic. Is that right? Synthetic weave. Armor. Done. Well, our strength is seven, but I mean... Uh, <laughs> There is, there, there's only ever going to, you only have to really worry too much about encumbrance if your game master is using encumbrance rules. 
you know, the generic encumbrance rules aren't, aren't that restrictive. You know, they're not really that much of a big deal. Your, your grenade launch is probably not going to be that heavy. Yeah. A crocodile D Dun, Dundee knife. You want a crocodile Dundee hunting knife. Oh my god. I'm just going to put knife. That'll do. The weakling lizard kid. Um, you're gonna you can assume anything you like. I don't I don't really mind. I mind. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's up to you. Um, right now, eleven plus our dexterity, and you'll notice with the synthetic weave, there is no restriction on our modifier. So we can have a modifier can be quite high. Okay, so eleven plus three is fourteen. So that would be our armor class with synthetic weave. It would go higher if we went. For something like um, the, so it would only go up by one if we took ballistic armor. Okay. Trojan horse. You want a Trojan horse? God oh, bloody. Okay. All right. So there's there's our our money. We've spent some money on that. I uh, will take you some more money away from you. You've got sixty now. Cool. Now we need to get onto a vehicle. Since we've done our armor, we've done our weapons. Let's, let's deal with um, with our <laughs> our vehicles, and hopefully, I'm I'm hoping the vehicles are in this next section here, because you get thirty thousand dollars to spend on ground vehicles. Yes, there is power armor in this game. Okay, if you're wondering, yes, there is. Right, armor modifications. We're not worrying about them right now. Shields. We're not taking a shield. Um, you, you, yeah. So let's move that out of out of our our. our our choices now there's a lot of gear here that you can select you can have all sorts of um, combat gear there are just normal gear like handcuffs a hollow um, graphic um, uh, generator which you can't afford but handcuffs you could afford uh, light sticks is basically just a glow rod um, a lighter if you wanted a lighter a pillow if you feel like you needed to have a snooze uh, a puppet you could afford that a shovel um, a sleeping bag if you want a sleeping bag soap um, survival rations, uh, towel, you know, always if you're <laughs> a two-way radio, if you want a two-way radio, um, a watch, an automatic watch, uh, a whistle, um, a, a widget bag, a standard adventurous kit is only $15, so you know, that's not too bad. Sunglasses, if you needed sunglasses, I don't think you've got, yeah, you've got enough money for sunglasses. Uh, you could have a tent, two to six people, if you wanted that sort of thing. Okay, those are the sorts of things you can have. Uh, we need armored, really? Okay, let's get on to vehicles. That was general gear. This is not that one. Cybernetics, uh, cybernetics. Okay, so I believe, oh God, where's the vehicle section? I think the vehicle section might be at the back. But let me just check. Ah, vehicle modifications, ground vehicles is 160, so we're getting closer, but not, not close enough. 160, there, there we go. Ground vehicles, here we go. Remember, your limit is $30,000. Good Lord. All right, so I'll only read out the ones that you can have. You can have a four-wheel, a four-wheeled ATV. I don't know what the heck that is, but you can, it's $500, so you can have that easy. An APC, an armored personnel carrier, is $28,000. Yes, you can afford it. Okay. You can have an armored truck at $13,000. You could have a, a luxury sedan, um, sedan car if you want. Uh, you could have a just a sedan car. You could have a sporty car at $25,000. Um... Let's keep going through here till I find another one you can have. You can have a sporty utility vehicle at uh, at twenty thousand dollars. You can, sorry, you can have a truck at eight thousand dollars. You can have a a van at ten thousand dollars. So those are all of the ground vehicles, okay? And then bikes that are wheeled. Uh, you could have a chopper if you want to have a chopper. It's fifteen thousand. You can have a cruiser, which is ten thousand. You could have a dirt or motocross um, bike if you want, at two thousand. You could have an uh, Endero. I don't know what the hell that is. Five thousand. 
You can have a scooter. If you feel like you need to have a scooter, there's $1,000 for that one. Okay. You could buy yourself a, um, a touring um, dual sports um, vehicle. Uh, you could buy a trike if you want to have a trike. You can have a, a wheeled buggy if you want to have a wheeled buggy. Um, you're not having an earth crawler, so forget about it. Don't even, don't even, don't even ask. <laughs> okay, it's too expensive. You'll have to steal one. Um, and the rest, oh, here we go, last one. You can have a tank at $25,000. If you really must drive around in a tank, you're proficient with a tank, you can have a tank at first level with $25,000. Okay, all right. An APC, an, Erdl, an armored personnel carrier. Uh, a sporty Prius. <laughs> yes, you can, Carmen, you can have a tank. You can have a tank. Here we go, I'll give you a tank. You wanted a tank, it's only $25,000 and you get to have a tank. All right, tank, there we go, you got a tank. Good, God help us. Um, with a grenade launcher, one-handed, and a tank, uh, all sorts of crazy things going on here. So yes, it tells you the armor class for this, it tells you how fast it moves, your tank doesn't move very fast. It is definitely not very maneuverable, you're going to have disadvantage on that one. Okay, it cargo, um, 500, I'm assuming that's like, uh, uh, maybe kilos, or is it pounds, I don't know, probably pounds. Um, capacity, you can carry up to four people in there, someone might have to ride up on top, okay. In terms of inside, you're all right. Size is H. I'm not sure what that means. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. You've got a tank. All right, you've done the tank thing. Let me fill in the rest of the information here on this character and how this works. And we probably need to go back to the class itself because that is going to be more useful to you. So if I go into here, 63, and we have... Purchase pretty much all of our gear. We've got our vehicle. We've got our light armor. We've got our one-handed small arm, okay, which is a grenade launcher of all things. And our bulletproof ego. At first level, as long as you are wearing light or no armor, you gain a bonus to your armor class equal to half your proficiency bonus rounded down. So, what that means is, if your proficiency bonus is two, which it is, you, it's, you take half of that, becomes one. We're not rounding down because it's not a fraction. So you get an extra to your armor class. Instead of 14, it is now 15 because you are the face class. Okay. So that, that's one of the benefits of the bulletproof um, ego. So uh, we are light or not, no, bonus to armor class equal to half your proficiency bonus. Rounded down. So we'll put this in here. Copy. So you know that it is there. And drop it in. And a paste star. Okay, so bit of information there, but yeah, that will that will certainly help explain what why why your armor class went up. Alright. Next, double your efforts. Let's have a look at double your efforts. James Garner tank. <laughs> uh, hey man. Alright, your your Double your efforts. This is how it works. Okay. You are not a fighter. You're a well everything. That's not a fighter. So starting at first level, once per turn on your turn, you can make a DC 15 wisdom or perception check as a free action. If you pass, you can take an additional action on top of your regular action. You cannot use your action your, your, to, to do anything that's... Um, you cannot use the... Attack action or cast a spell with your extra action. Okay, at ninth level, it's going to um, change the DC changes. So basically, let's take this. Yes, this is a pretty impressive feature. There's a reason why you want to have a high perception and a really good wisdom, is because of this DC. Okay, so so let's do this, and I will copy and paste it into our character sheet under. This one here. Paste. Okay. Right, so let's just once per turn. Um, once per turn, DC 15 wisdom perception check is a free um uh, it's a free action. We're not gonna put all that, just put free action. 
We know it's a free action. Um, uh, additional action on top of your regular action. Let's get rid of this. And um, bracket no spells or tag. Still useful, you could do it for, use it for something else. It doesn't have to be spells and attacks, right? All right, so that's that's that feature. Dun dun dun. Okay, next, life insurance. You're not expected to be in a fight, so best to use your resources more constructively. Starting at first level, instead of using your hit hit dice to recover hit points during rests, you get to do something else. You can expend them to gain an edge when required. Spend hit dice on your turn to gain no hit points and you gain all of the following benefits. Okay, so you're using this in battle, in combat. You can automatically pass the double your effort skill check to gain the additional action. So this is your first thing. Automatically pass this thing. This particular feature, double your efforts. Remember double your efforts? I was talking about it before. So insurance does a lot of things. And paste. Okay. So that's the first one. We're not finished though. There is more. Uh, you have advantage on all attack rolls, ability checks, and skill checks until the beginning of your next turn. So if you decide to use your hit, your hit dice, which you can, in this way, you could. Let's see. Why? Why is it doing that? Come on, just let me just copy and paste that little bit in there. You, you scumbag. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, oh, it's, it's, it's annoying me now. Okay, let's do that. So this is something else you could do if you want to with your life insurance using your, your hit dice. Okay, advantage on all attack rolls, ability checks, and skill checks. Uh, and we want to drop in the other part of it until the beginning of your next turn. Oh, come on. Turn. And we'll put that in. Uh, checks. And paste until turn and the next feature that you could also potentially use. You don't get all of these, but you could you could have one of them. Um, um, oh, you go. Oh, so you gain all the benefits, not just you don't select. You can get all any, all these benefits, not just one. Oh my god! Any charisma saving throw you are forced to um 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 any saving throws you force a target to make before the end of your next turn have a plus one bonus to the um, DC so let's take that one yeah so you get all of these when you use those hit dice on your turn in combat I don't know looks pretty good to me not too bad now there are some additional things that happen at higher levels when you get to level five your speed increases by five feet and you gain a plus one bonus to armor class until the begin until the beginning of your next turn 10th level you get a um, bonus to saving save dcs increases to uh, plus five eek um, at level 14 you get you regain two of your hustle pull uh, there's a hustle feature later on in, in this uh, in this class at level 18, uh, you can also roll the spent hit die and recover hit points equal to the result. So you get your hit dice to use to get hit points back at level 18 if you ever get there, plus all these other things I just mentioned. So quite a few, few a few cool things, right? That, that's that's not bad. Seriously? Now, way of the protagonist. I didn't mention this. But you get two protagonist traits at level 1. You get more at level 5, 10, 15, 20. So, let's, let's have a look at what we get. We get um, uh, Biting Taunt, uh, Cognitive Empathy. You can have Face Man. You can have Fascination. You can have Ice Man. You can ha um, Know the Signs. 
Mind Twist, Poker Face, Poly, um, Polygolit, Polygolit, I think it is, Possible Psychopath, uh, Veneer, Winning Smile. Okay, those are the, you get two of these things. So let's let's get you to pick some of these things. I will read them out to you, don't you worry. For those of you who are wondering, what are these things going to do? That's all right, I'll read them out. Okay, so hashtag. Select two, um, now what's the, what's the word? Pro tag. Protag honest traits. Your mother was a hamster. That's right. Okay, let me let me let me read them out and you can decide what you want. So biting taunt. You are able to scream an obscenity that is shocking shockingly personal and vile to your opponent. As an action you can target an enemy that can hear and understand you. It makes a charisma saving throw. If the target fails, it has a disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the beginning of your next turn. A target that su um, succeeds on the DC has advantage on additional saving throws against this effect until you finish a long rest. Okay, so, it's good and some bad. Cognit cognitive empathy. The truth is written in their face faces. Through inter interpreting a micro expressions, body language and other aspects of applied psychology, my area of expertise actually, uh, you can read the thoughts of certain individuals. As an action, you can focus your mind on any one creature that you, that you can see within 30 feet uh, of you. And, uh, that has an intelligence of 4 or higher, so if it's not very intelligent it's not going to work. It makes a charisma saving throw. If it fails, you learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what it is most likely to do in the immediate future, and what could possibly be on its mind. You also gain insight into its reasoning, if any, and or its emotional state. This effect lasts until the end of your next turn or until you break line of sight. Okay. Face man. It's all about personality. Select one uh, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma skill, uh, or one item proficiency. As an action, double your proficiency bonus uh, with the next check made with that skill or item. You can select face man a second time and select another skill or item. Fascination. You are, in fact, the most interesting person in the world. At least to your target. Or your mark. As an action, you can attempt to charm a target. It must be able to hear and understand you. It makes a charisma saving throw. If it fails, the creature is not only charmed by you, but by all your allies and the target the target can see. So not just you, but your, your allies. The charmed effect ends if the target suffers damage or five minutes have passed. So it's got a time limit. Uh, when you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest. If the target makes a saving throw, um, makes the saving throw, you recover the use of fascination, but cannot use it again against the same target until you finish a long rest. But you could use a different. You could go after a different target. You can select fascination a second time and gain a second use before finishing a long rest if you wanted to. Iceman, you suffer a critical hit. You gain one spent hit die. So if you suffer a critical hit, you regain one spent hit die. Okay, not bad. Know the signs. You have advantage against any charisma and wisdom saving throw. So that might be useful. Uh, mind twist. <clears throat> More so than insulting a target, you say something so bizarre or perhaps amazingly insightful. The target is forced to take time to think it over. As an action, you can target an enemy that can hear and understand you. If it, may, if it, makes, a charisma, um, it makes a charisma saving throw, if the target fails, it is stunned until, stunned until the beginning of your next turn. Oh my gosh. Uh, when you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest. So it's one use. 
uh, per day. If the target makes the saving throw, you recover the use of Mind Twist, but cannot use it again against the same target until you finish a long rest. Of course, you could use a different target. You can select Mind Twist a second time and gain a second use before finishing a long rest if you wanted to. Poker Face. You are immune to being frightened or charmed. That's right. Additionally, all allies that you see, um, um, all allies that can see you have advantage against being frightened or charmed as well. Polygolus, uh, poly, polygolot, polygolot. Learn three additional languages. You also gain one additional language every three levels from now on. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of languages. Possible psychopath. You have resistance to psychic damage as well as having advantage on saving throws against any effect that would sense your emotions or read your thoughts. Hmm, that might be useful. Okay. Veneer. A disguise kit is the only is only the beginning outside of clothing and makeup. You can now alter your voice and mannerisms. You can also mimic specific people. Oh, this might be good. Um, if any if attempting a generic person, the disguise is near flawless and you have advantage on the disguise kit. Regardless, if you are mimicking a specific or generic person, if your ability check to create the visual um, disguise is less than your charisma saving throw um, DC, you can use this, use that instead. So there's, there's some options with this. Winning smile. Before making a skill check for a skill you are proficient with, you can instead set your roll to your ability score. In other words, you don't need to roll to make a ability check. You could just use the static ability score. When you're using winning smile, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest. Okay. Uh, you can select Winning Smile a second time and gain a second use before finishing a long rest. That is a very, very strong feature. And considering your charisma is probably very high, um, there's potential to make quite good use of that. <laughs> so, I'm kind of curious. What did you decide to pick? Because I have to put in here a protagonist trait. Dun dun dun! Winning smile, cognitive thing. The cognitive uh, poker face. You like poker face? Funding a Kickstarter for a deck of insults. <laughs> so we're going to take poker face, since uh, it's there. And somebody has said um, winning smile, so we'll take winning smile. Remember, at level five, you're going to get more of these suckers. It's not the only thing you get. You do get more of these later on. So it's it's not. It's not bad at all. Okay, so let's go here. Um, let's put this under. That's for the other thing. So let's just put this here and go protagonist. Protag. Protagonist. Protagonist. Traits. Traits. And... Uh, we're just going to just write down. I won't. I won't d write down the whole thing. Winning. Smile. And poker face. All right. So you have two. You can get some more at level five. Okay. So that's that bit done. Very good. Glad I could help. Uh, next, on our our character sheet and what we need to actually do, well, there are some numbers that need to be filled in. Okay. We don't currently have any inspiration, so let's not worry about the inspiration. We'll get rid of that. Uh, we're going to punch in some of these numbers. So strength is going to be a minus two when you make a saving throw for that one. Your dexterity is a plus three. Your con is a plus two. You are proficient, so you get your intelligence is nothing, so your proficiency bonus is a plus two for that one. Okay, so proficiency bonus and for wisdom and your wisdom modifier, so that is a plus four. Your charisma is going to be really good at a, add the modifier for charisma at plus three, and the proficiency bonus at plus two, that's a plus five. So there's the numbers for that. Uh, okay, so now let's put in all of our dex stuff. Dex is three, dex, 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 three, dex, three, 
Why am I doing it this way? I'm doing it this way because apparently a lot of people don't know how to build a character without using D&D Beyond. Um, okay, next. Stealth. We are proficient and our dex modifier is plus three, so that's going to be a plus five for that one. And do I have any more dexes? No, that's it. Okay, next is wisdom. Wisdom is really good. It's plus two, so plus two. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Insight is also proficient, so plus two. And then in the proficiency bonus, is also plus two. It becomes a four. And wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Uh, that's medicine. It's plus two for that one. Wisdom perception. We are proficient and we have a modifier of plus two. It means we add those two numbers together. It gets a plus four. And uh, survival is just going to be a plus two. Okay, cool. Next one, intelligence. Our intelligence is zero, so we're just going to go plus zero. More intelligence, we don't have that one, so plus zero. Uh, demolitions, plus zero. Uh, engineering, plus zero. Don't have that. History, we do have history as a skill, so that's uh, zero plus two for the proficiency bonus, which comes to a plus two. Okay. Um, it's intelligence, intelligence, investigation. We are proficient and we have a plus two because of our bonus. So that's going to be plus four. Bonus modifier plus two and proficiency comes to two. That's four, yes. Uh, keep going with the intelligence stuff. Nature, it's just going to be a plus zero. Uh, more intelligence stuff. Religion, we don't have that one. So that's just zero for intelligence. And sciences, we don't have sciences, so that's zero as well. Next, strength, we have a minus two. So athletics is not our thing. Minus two. Okay, that's strength. I think that's the only strength skill that I remember. Yes, that's true. Cool. Next, we have deception. Our area of expertise, deception, we get a plus three. We're not even proficient with it. Um, intimidation, plus three. Uh, performance, we are proficient with this, and so that's a plus two for the proficiency, and our modifier charisma is three, so that's a plus five for both performance and persuasion, so it's not bad. That's all our numbers there. Our passive check for our um, perception, perception is a four, so 10 plus four gives us 14. We've got our passive perception sorted out. And I believe that is our character sheet pretty much done. Now, what I'm going to do is I am very quickly going to explain the ladders, okay? The, the ladders, one other thing about the ladders is uh, it's kind of fulfilling the same role as the archetype, okay? Archetype ladders tend to do exactly the same sort of thing. So um, is it 99? I believe it is archetype but we're not dealing with ladders we're dealing with archetype and i don't think archetype comes until level three so where is it um uh, here we go so uh, archetypes unlike fantasy classes all ultra modern five classes have the same set levels for archetypes so at level three you get an archetype not at level one level 7, level 11, level 15, level 18 that's all i wanted to mention that there is a bunch of different archetypes that you can lay over your class okay so it's certainly an option to do so so you can you can use any of those archetypes to lay them over any of the classes which gives you a lot of different combinations okay there's another thing called ladders and um i said i wouldn't go over it but i, I will go over it very very quickly because it is still a fun thing and probably useful to actually know what the heck it is so let's go go here to ladders uh, it's 48, yeah, ladders. So ladders, i just get it to roll. Will it roll? Yeah, here we go. So ladders. So at first level, you can select a ladder. Now, you don't get a lot with your ladder at first level, but you do get the opportunity. You don't have to, but you can use it if you want to. Basically what a ladder is, is instead of taking a feat at level 4, or 8, or 12, or 16, or 19, okay? There's the ladder system. So at first level, you select a ladder. You gain the ladder's first level feature, 
and you can choose to gain its additional features instead of selecting an ability score improvement. So instead of at level 4, 8, 12, 16 or 19, there's the option to go with an ability score improvement or take a feat. Or you can take a ladder. But you can still take the ladder at first level. It's still not going to affect you. So it would be silly not to take a ladder even though you're not getting a huge amount out of it. Now there are a bunch of different ladders. I will tell you what they are. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm just going to tell you what they are in terms of the name. Born Leader. If you want Born Leader, you can have it. Not a problem. Juggernaut. It's exactly what it sounds like. Okay? Juggernaut. Um, which, where's the next one? Uh, no, 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 no. Performer. If you think that your character would be a performer, you can pick the performer one and get the, the feature for the performer. Runner. If you're right into running around. I don't know. Maybe you are. Savant, if you feel, feel like your character would be a savant, okay? Uh, what's the next one? Survivor, if you want to pick up Survivor, go with Survivor. Uh, next one, Veteran, if you want to be a veteran of some kind. Uh, your next one here is Warrior, if you want to be a warrior. Uh, you can also select, where is it? No, that's it. I think that's it. That's it. So those are the, so I want you to select a, a ladder. Hashtag, select a ladder. And it's not a ladder that you climb on. It's literally a ladder. So you get a lot, you probably get more from Ultra Modern 5 in terms of class features than you do from Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing at all. It may well be a bad thing, okay? But what, are they, what they're designed to do is to help you decide where your character's going. Um, and some things, like ladders, can be very interesting there is a section on your character sheet for that archetype right now it does not apply so we'll just put in a and you're going to tell me what ladder you would like and i'm going to have a drink of water because i'm i'm definitely talking too much talking like a, an idiot talking way way too much as I said, even if you pick the ladder, you're only going to get the ladder feature at level one. And then after that, you don't even have to take the other features. Okay. Performer or Savant? Savant it is. There's two votes for Performer and Savant. Savant. It is a Savant hole. Savant. So let's, let's go see what our ladder Savant gives us at level one, shall we? Uh, down, 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 down. Where's the Savant? That's Performer. Runner, Savant. Okay, let me go over this very quickly with you. Your strengths are not in your endurance, speed, or ability to shoot something with pinpoint accuracy. You use part of your body uh, of the body's. Um, you use a part of the body. Most of your comrades seem to let um, necrotize or your brain. You're the one with all the answers. Okay. An encyclopedia of knowledge. You went to school, you have degrees and awards of merit. You took these credentials and either went underground to use your expertise in nefarious ways, or accept a position with a school or corporation where they range you with, uh, with stock options and complementary cars. You understand that you may be on the border between genius and madness. Oh my dear. Um, but all of the great minds of the uh, the world balance on a knife's edge anyway. In your spare time, you read. Okay, so key abilities tend to be intelligence and wisdom. But in this case, trained training beats experience. Okay, beginning when you choose this ladder at first level, you can use your intelligence in place of dexterity for attacks. So you could do that if you wanted to. This is what this feature does. And damage rolls. And when setting DC um, save, um, save DCs with one-handed or two-handed small arms. So this may not be what you want to pick up, but this is what it does. You can also use intelligence or wisdom as your modifier to armor class instead of dexterity and as your spell casting ability if you cast spells. Select either intelligence or wisdom as your primary savant ability. So savant may not be the best option there. I'm going to suggest to you that you'll probably find that Born Leader is probably a good one to take. Okay? If I go and look at Performer, so we'll go to Performer. 
not savant, <laughs> not savant, okay. If I go back to performer and read out what performer says, okay, performer, I won't go, I'm not going to read out the description of the performer, you know what it is. So key abilities are dexterity and charisma, which are things that you're really good at. So constant practice is the performer. Beginning when you choose this ladder at first level, you can also always choose to use dexterity instead of charisma for performance checks. So again, may not be super useful to you, but it's up to you if you like the idea of being a performer. You can also choose to use your charisma instead of your dexterity for acrobatics checks. So that would mean your acrobatics checks are going to be a little bit better. You also gain proficiency in deception and performance skills. So in other words, you would get another skill. Now, because we already have performance, what I would suggest is we simply pick up a different class skill that you haven't already selected. Select either dexterity or charisma as your primary performance ability. Take not stupid, born leader. So born leader, well look, there would be nothing wrong with taking performance, but I'll read out the born leader one, okay. Um, I'm not going to read the description, I think you understand what born leader means, but this is what born leader would give you. Brains and good looks. Beginning when you choose this ladder at first level, you can also choose to use intelligence instead of wisdom for insight and perception checks. So again, that first feature is not necessarily going to be that useful, but here we go. Additionally, after taking a long rest, if you wear no armor or wield no weapons, you gain a, gain a plus two bonus to your charisma or intelligence, select one. Again, that may not be terribly useful. Until you make a, an attack or cast a spell, either select charisma or intelligence as your primary born leader ability. So you pick the one that you sort of think would sort of work with you, you or the one that, you, that sort of flavor-wise would work. There's nothing wrong with taking performer. It doesn't have to be born leader, okay? You might find mechanically wise that actually performer is probably going to be more useful to you. Or you might not. Really, again, like I said, one of those things where you decide whether you think you would prefer it or not. So it could be born leader or it could be performer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've done the whole character sheet. It's taken me an hour and 42 minutes to get through it all. Performer it is. Done. Savant is now performer. Whoopsies, that ain't it. Performer. So because of performer, we have a special feature. I'm going to chuck it in to here. Life events, we'll leave that area alone. We'll chuck it down the bottom, I think, as performer. Under ladder. And this is it here. Um, constant practice. Can I, can I highlight it? Will it let me? No, it won't. I'll just write down constant practice. That'll do. Constant practice. Okay, that is what you get. I won't write in all the details. There's too much information there. There we go. You've built a character for Ultra Modern 5. You have a tank. You have a grenade launcher. You have a revolver. You have a knife. Um, you've got a lot of different skills going on here. There's, there's quite a bit, in, in fact. <laughs> there's not a small number of things at all. Not even remotely a small number of things. So, yes, I think you're doing all right, if you ask me. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> I think you'll do what you need to do in the game fairly effectively. Anyway, that is all I have in terms of character building today. You're probably thinking, Fred, what are we doing next? Well, we're going to do the Grounder in Ultra Modern 5 next week. The Grounder is really a, a basic infantry uh, trooper uh, or soldier, and uh, that's a, a very different kettle of fish. So that is the, the one that I'll be definitely covering tomorrow. Uh, no, no, not tomorrow, next week. Same day, same time, same bat channel. Yeah. Uh, now we have three social skills. <laughs> yes, that's that's true. So um, with with performer, so for example, when it says performer, you select, uh, you, you can also gain uh, proficiency in deception and performance. So what you can do is you put, we'll mark down deception as well. So I'll, I'll adjust that now. And that means you'll be proficient with that as well. 
and we already have um, performance so what we'll do is we'll get a just grab another skill for our our character that we can use and we might as well just chuck it into intimidation how's that how's that sound um, we could have picked anything else that was available as part of our class, but I'm just doing this quickly. Um, so I've done that. Done it. It's done. It's in. It's it's uh, it's <laughs> it's locked down. All right. The grunt. Yes, that's right. So next week is the grunt for Ultra Modern Five. Um, so have you made a face class character for Ultra Modern Five? No, seventy-seven percent. I'm not surprised. Just watching, twenty-two percent. Yes, nobody's ever done this. This is the first time out of nine vote, votes. I, I uh, Look, I, I'm aware that this is not necessarily going to get a lot of traction in terms of people's interest, but I still want to present to you third-party stuff that I think is interesting and does something different that Wizards of the Coast isn't doing. And this is definitely very different to what Wizards of the Coast is doing. Okay, absolutely sure of that. Anyway. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been watching and listening. I want to thank you who've been taking part in the poll. I want to thank uh, all of my patrons who support me on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. It's really good that you're able to do this because otherwise me building different characters or using different classes or from different game systems is just not going to be possible. And Carmen, I hope to see you next week for the Grounder and we'll do another Ultra Modern 5 character class. How's that sound? Um, I want to thank Carmen Graves, Fred Huber. Thank you for being here. Really great to have your feedback. Pale Rider, who's been chucking in his feedback. And everybody else, I believe Overboard uh, also was here at uh, one point, probably before he had to go or had to go and eat some food. Um, look, without the comments, without you making choices and decisions, these live streams just don't work. So without you doing that, hey, I can't say any more other than Huge thank you. Thank you for doing that. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. Anyway, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, I want you to look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. I want to say a huge, particularly a huge think, thank you to Fred Huber, who keeps uh, prompting and encouraging people in the live chat to actually engage, and I think that really does help. And hey, till next time. Keep rolling those 20s.